point in the year, and after our disciple series to date, you have a deep sense that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, that you have been for your whole life, and that you will continue to be a disciple from here on even into eternity. But being a disciple brings with it challenges, and at times we say, what am I supposed to do as a disciple? God's people have always asked that question, and God has always raised up prophets to answer that question. They asked the question at the time of Jeremiah, now nearly 3,000 years ago, when the people felt that the church was under attack, the church was even dying. And they went to God and said, God, what is going to happen to us? And God said to them, stop asking the question, what is going to happen to you? And instead, start asking the question, how are you going to happen to the world? And that's always the question that is in God's heart and soul. Not what's happening to us, but the fact that we are empowered and that we as God's church are going to happen to the world. We are not the ones who sit back and allow things to happen to us. We're God's people. We are the ones who change the whole world around us. The way that God spoke those words in Jeremiah 29 was this, I will tell you what's going to happen. You are going to search for me, and you are going to find me, because you are going to search diligently, and when you find me, you will be restored, and you will become the power by which the whole world is saved. The people in Ephesus, people who for the most part had been made disciples for the Apostle Paul, came to a time of great trouble. They were being persecuted by the established church, they were being persecuted by Rome, and they went to Paul saying, what is going to happen to us? The same question that the people had asked of Jeremiah, what's to become of us? And Paul gave the same answer, stop asking what's going to happen to you and you start happening to the world. And in the beautiful words in Ephesians 2 and verse 10, Paul says this, the Lord has made you for a life of good deeds. And he has already set all those good deeds out ahead of you, and God is just waiting for you to do them. And I think that's an incredible thought, whether it's coming out of Jeremiah 3,000 years ago, or the Apostle Paul 2,000 years ago, or out of the church today, God's message for you in this service is this. You were made for a special purpose. And the purpose for what you were made is this. God made you for a life of good deeds. And those good deeds are lined up ahead of you. God has put them out there just waiting for you to do them. That's the only answer that you need. That's how you are going to affect the world. And in your life, the way in which you affect the world is far more important than any effect the world is going to have on you. God made you for that purpose. God put that purpose deep down within your soul. And until you begin to fulfill that purpose, you will be hungry, and you will be empty, and you will be sad, and you will be broken. 
coming out of the wisdom of Jeremiah and out of Paul, not only in the verses we read today, but in other verses, I think that there are three things for which the human soul was made. 